I'm very happy to join you. And I'm very glad for the predecessors who have already tackled the many questions of Iran. As I'm here to introduce Shokri Bayat, I um, would like to add some words on the problem from my perspective. And uh, um, I'm grateful also to Ricardo Pozzo to speaking about the simultaneous dynamics all over the world that was not only invented with information science, but nonetheless. So this is a very difficult uh, topic. And I hope that within a few five or seven minutes, I can introduce you to what I would like to address. So uh, we all understand that what is happening in Iran has a lot to do with information ethics and why it comes into play here. It has changed the world and it started to change the world when we think about 2013, when we really thought that now the digitization takes over and the young people all over the world went on the streets. So, um, and this, I also want to point to the, uh, to the fact that this worldwide digitization also adds to our responsibilities, what is happening there. So because it is now all about knowing and all about being informed, and I will more talk about that and in regard taking this problem of information um, in regard to the problem of how well are we informed what happened to the women and what is uh, the fact with the history of women. So I will extend this topic to another issue in my short introduction. I also want to call to your attention the fact that these occurrences that are now happening in Iran are by no means singular. In Iran, yesterday there were women who were deprived of their life, who were taken into prison, who were raped. Tomorrow there will be, you know, this is not a singular fact what is happening here. There is a history of women's struggles and fight for freedom about which most of us have no idea, no information. This is the problem. And this is also a part of the whole problem. I, however, I'm convinced that if the knowledge about the women's history would be known all over the world, this would change the present and would change, and this only can change also our future. And I will add some more uh, thoughts on that and take some parallels and coming back to the simultaneous thoughts in different countries without knowing from each other. So it's also something to laugh about. I don't know if you will laugh. So first, the very sad things the death, of course, of Masha Amini that sparked a protest by the Iranian women and men. Two female journalists reported on their social media about the rapes, about how it should be reported on the rapes, and what happened at the funeral, and how felt the parents. And for doing things that we regard as being virtuous things, they have been put into prison. You know, the point is that they are now arrested, they are in prison in solitary confinement and accused of Western espionage. I will come back to that point too. In saying this, I'm now switching the topic, but in reality, I do not. I ask you now a question that you might find ridiculous. But I tell you, again, it is not. It is to show and to unveil a structure from my point of view, 
how the simultaneous dynamics is working all over the world. The question is simple. What do these old bearded men fear? Are the beards essential to the cruelty? And you will be wondering because yes, they are. And I tell you why this is, because we have a whole bunch of women philosophers in the Western world from 1400 on talking about the abuse of women and the rape of women in all the times in the church. These women have never been heard. And it's only since 10 or 20 years that these abuses are discussed in the Western world. But I will also uh, quote from uh, uh, Marie de Gonet, who wrote in 1622, in her essay on the equality of men and women, she uh, says, those who deny that women are not made in the image of God must probably define their likeness to God by their beard. So this is a whole story. I don't know if you know that, for example, Kant said yes to women philosophers, they should wear a beard. So there is a whole discussion about the beard, even in the Western uh, uh, cultural history. So this beard is indeed not by random. Um, this is an, uh, really an institutionalized symbol worldwide. And it is a symbol in the cultural history. It is a symbol that women cannot achieve holiness. And the same arguments that I cannot go into now, but these women in the Western world have extemporated widely about Augustine, why the woman is the origin of the sin. And this is the thought, which is also at the basic here in the Iranian suppression and the suffering of women. So we see a worldwide practice, though it may happen at different times and think that in the Western world, we call that the period of the witch burning. Uh, but I would like to go even further in my argument. Masha Amini, as I have said, was not the first. There were many before her and there will be many after her. These women are all part of a tradition of brave and sensible women fighting against violence and justice. Shokri Bayat, who will talk then, also belongs to that tradition because she also had to flee from Iran as it was said that her hijab did not fit properly. The problem that we are facing is that each of them is a case of singularity. There is never a history of this heroic struggle of women. If we had a row from over a thousand years or two thousand years, I think we would judge this situation differently. There is no history collecting these information to form a tradition of women's fight for freedom. And I will make the point that we need this history in the world to report on these heroic women and to bring it into the basic of the educational system of our world. There is no reason why this history should not be part in the education of young uh, students. I am, however, also not the first to identify the connection between the suppression of women and the fact of depriving them of their history. Um, so common people perhaps know one or two names from famous women in the history of philosophy, but they don't know the long tradition. And when these movement started, as I have said, with the witch burning and with this misogynism of the uh, Christian church, the uh, Italian writer Christine de Pisan analyzed the situation as I'm repeating that now. And she said, she started to collect the names of women from 
all over the world, as she is saying, from all nations and from all times, to prove that these women were the two persons of virtue. From that time on, the Western world started a great tradition. Nonetheless, that in parallel, the witch burning took place. There is a great tradition of women and Bible critics. And I would like to give you another quote from a woman from that time. Her name, she's also an Italian because Italy was very strong in that. And she's the Italian Arcangela Tarabotti. And what she's saying fits, I think, perfectly to what the situation is in Iran. And this morning I gave a talk with some uh, um, connection to what I'm saying now. And a woman from India said, it's the same situation in India with the beards and with all these uh, things. In our time, so Arcangela Tarabotti wrote in 1650, in our time, religion is no longer the place of faith, but of imprisonment. Religion has become a functionary of patriarchal despotism, ruling over women, breaking their will, and abusing them for its own purposes. What would Iranian women do, and what would it change if they knew about this long tradition and the many fights that have been fought before them? Would it strengthen them? I think I'm quite sure that it would. I'm quite sure that it became a different tradition. But let me now nearly conclude with another word and coming back to the Western question. In 1789, more or less at the end of this long tradition of strong women, a woman, Olympe de Gouges, who claimed for herself and who claimed that it were the women who have fought in France for freedom and equality, and that France was, as she said, saved by women, had a similar fate. She did not survive. The revolutioner Robespierre himself, however, a result of the fight of the people for freedom and equality against aristocracy at the time, did not allow women who wanted to be the half of the presentation of the people in the French National Convent. Robespierre sent Olympe de Gouche to the guillotine. And I ask you, will the Iranian leader imitate the behavior of Robespierre? Will they imitate the worst of Western tradition by sending these women to their death? These women from Iran and all those women who have fought and fight with them create the great tradition of great women. We must preserve the history of women's struggle and fight for freedom. And this is what I would like to tell you, because women have no history in our world. You are used to see that, you know, but you don't protest against that. But I want you to understand that there is a lot of reason to protest against that. We have to maintain the memory to strengthen our tradition. This is a necessary part of the change that has to come.